All right, everyone. Well, this week we're going to talk about lighting and generating really interesting lighting effects for graphics. We're not working with any photos. We're going to create some interesting lighting effects all from scratch right inside Photoshop. And we're going to start with a blank document here. I've got a document set with a black background. And just so you can see, I'm working with about a 10 by 6 at 75 DPI image. And I'm only showing you this because if you try this effect on a higher res file, you may need to tweak the settings as we go a little bit to accommodate whatever size file you may be working on. But just so you can have a starting point of knowing what size file I'm working on, there you have it. All right. So we got a back, black background on our document. Let's go ahead and create a new blank layer. Let's expand our window out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and select my rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to draw a narrow selection right in the middle of my file. Right about like that. I'm going to go ahead and press Shift Delete or Shift Backspace on a Windows machine. And we'll get the Fill dialog here. We're going to use 50% gray and we'll hit OK. And we'll just deselect. Now, I'm going to lock the transparency and we're going to go into the Filter menu and choose Render Fibers. Now, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so we can see what's going on. I'm going to leave the variance to around 4, just keeping it very low, and the strength around 30. And if you don't like the absolute configuration of this, you can always hit the randomize key, and it'll give you a different arrangement. It's kind of like just randomly changes the distribution of the fibers. But I like, I like what I'm looking at here, so I'm going to go and leave it at that, and we'll hit OK. And there we have that. Now, I'm going to increase the contrast of this a little bit. I'm going to bring up my levels by pressing Command or Control L. And let's push these sliders in just to increase that contrast just a little bit. Now, of course, that transparency is still locked, so I'm going to go under the Filter menu and choose Blur, Motion Blur. And we're going to do a 90 degree straight up and down blur at about 250 pixels. That looks pretty good. Everything's good, OK. Now, on that same layer, I'm going to apply a layer mask. Let's go ahead and unlock the transparency. I no longer need that. Now, on that layer mask, you can see it's highlighted. We're going to take the gradient tool and inside the gradient editor making sure we've got the second item selected which is the foreground to transparent and making sure that black is set as my foreground color so we can mask out the top area of this I'm gonna hold down my shift key and just draw a gradient downward just a little bit right about like that so I've applied the layer mask I no longer need the layer mask it's masked out the area I need and I know I'm no longer going to need going to need to edit that layer mask so I'm simply going to drag it to the trash can and it's going to ask me if I want to delete it altogether cancel the operation or apply it to my image when I say apply it's going to throw away the layer mask but keep the masking that has been applied so if I click apply the layer mask goes away but we've still got that area masked so that object is set. Let's go ahead and distort it. I'm going to press Command or Control T to bring up the free transform dialog here. We're going to rotate the object right about like that and position it right about here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Still with the object in free transform mode, I'm going to Control or right click directly on it and we're going to choose the distort feature. I'm going to grab these corner objects here. I'm just going to push these two really close together in the upper corner here and then spread these a little bit further apart. So, so it looks like kind of a weird beams of light that are coming in from this side. So like that. And I can reposition it here what I want. OK. So now I want to colorize this. I don't want it to just be plain white light. So I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to press Command or Control U to bring up Hue Saturation. And we're going to click on Colorize. And I'm going to make these lights a little bit of bluish color. At around 220 for the hue and saturation, I'm going to increase just ever so slightly. Right about like that. And that looks pretty good. So 220 hue, saturation at 40, hit OK. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to the Edit menu and choose Transform, Flip Horizontal, and just position it on the other side. So it appears as though we have that kind of light coming in from both directions. All right. So now our lighting is set. Let's create the ground elements here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. I'm going to go into the toolbar and choose my elliptical marquee tool. And I'm going to draw elliptical selection pretty much the distance between this edge of this light and the edge of this light over here. And let's just go 
make it a little bit thicker, right about there. And I want to fill it with the same color that the beams of light are, because it's just, this light is hitting the ground here, so it's obviously going to be the same color. So let's go up and get our eyedropper and just sample this blue here. And with it set as a foreground color, I'm just going to press Option Delete, and it will fill that shape right in there. I'm going to go and deselect that. And I want to s blur this up. I don't, you don't want those edges to be so sharp. So I'm going to go under Filter, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll give it about a 15 pixel blur. Looks pretty good. And we'll hit OK. I'm going to press Command or Control T to bring up that free transform once more. And I'm just going to hold down my Option key or the Alt so it scales it toward the center here. And I'm just going to scale it in just a little bit. Let's bring this part down a little bit more. Right about like that. Okay. So now I've got the base floor that this light is all shining on. So I'm going to scale it in just a little bit more. So now I need to bring my subject in, which in this case, I'm just going to do one letter. Now I'm going to do the letter X. In honor of the most recent release of Apple's OS X Leopard. Now of course you could try, you know, full words, your name, anything you want on here. Once you apply the techniques, all the same effect will apply. So I'm just going to do the letter X. And I'm going to leave it filled with black. You can see it's filled with black there. Position it right about in the middle. Right about like that. And the, if I double click and highlight the text itself, you can see the font I'm using. And this is this Trojan Pro. And I can go ahead and probably make it bold just to give it a little bit more presence there. Now, to make it look like it's actually sitting in this lighted area, I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is apply a layer style to the text. So with the text layer highlighted, I'm going to go into the Effects menu and choose Inner Shadow. And what we're going to do is actually click on the color swatch. And while in the color picker here, I can go in here and sample that blue color, which I'll do right there. In fact, I'll make it a little bit lighter in here. And we'll hit OK. Now I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. And you can see what's going on here. Now we're going to have to tweak this a little bit. I've got the angle set to 90, which is coming in straight from the top there. If you see if I turn it, it comes in from that direction. I'm going to have it set at 90. So it looks like the light's kind of hitting on the sides and the top here. And I'm going to change the distance to 2 and also the size to 2. So it gives a little bit more sharpness, like it's just hitting those edges just barely. So that looks pretty good. And we'll hit OK. So now I need to create the shadows that are being cast by each of these lights. Well, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this text layer. And I'm going to remove get that bottom layer there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the layer style that's been applied. And I'm also going to go ahead and rasterize the layer because we're going to be distorting this letter a little bit. So can't do that if it's still editable text. So I'm going to control or right click directly on that layer and choose rasterize type. All right, so with that layer still selected, let's go under the edit menu, go to transform, flip vertical, and take the move tool and drag it down until it snaps to the bottom of that letter there. Just nudge that up just a little. So there it is. It looks almost looks like a reflection, but not quite. All right, so I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. So there's two versions of that shadow because we have two light sources. We're going to have two casting shadows. So let's select the first one, press Command or Control T, and we're going to go into and we're going to Control or right click right on that object again, and this time choose Distort, and we're going to bend this object. So these side lines almost line up perfectly with this direction of this light. And that will kind of give us the casting shadow of that light. Let's change the opacity to this to around 50. And let's do the exact same thing to the other sides. Command or Control T, Control or right click directly on the object, distort. And let's skew that over until these lines line up with the light there. Seems to look pretty good. Press Enter and change that opacity to 50%. And that pretty much does it. We've gone ahead and taken the simple fibers that we applied, blurred it, and made it create a kind of an interesting lighting effect, and then dropped this text right in the middle of that. And it really has a kind of three-dimensional presence there, like the light is really casting down here, and it's casting that shadow down. All looks pretty good. It probably could distort 
those shadows just a little bit more. Just about like that. Skew that over just a little bit more. Gives it a more realistic. You can tweak it, play with it a little bit. But as I said, or as I as you can see, this is still editable text. If I go ahead and highlight this, I can change this to a different word or something like that, but and that layer style will still apply. The only thing you'll have to do is just redistort the cast shadows that are on there. But that's a simple technique and you can reapply it. So give it a try yourself, see what kind of different arrangement you can come up with, and even try a different color light. You know, when I, back when we did, created the hue and saturation, I chose blue, but give yourself a different color light, see what kind of different uh, variations you can come up with yourself. But have fun with it and we'll see you next time.